This Audi was in a serious accident. We're gonna transform it from a crashed, well, completely messed up mess into a car. And now we have the new bumper that's in this box, but we need to paint. Let's get to it. I took the fender and bumper to my uncle because he has many years of painting, so I can learn how to paint this thing properly. We want this thing looking absolutely perfect. Moved on to painting the bumper and spraying some clear down. Bumper is looking really good. We got the fender painted. We're back at the shop before I install the fender and the bumper and everything. The most important thing to do is install these headlights. So we're gonna install the headlights because we wanna make sure that those work. I started by installing the bracket to the driver's side headlight and then fitting it and making sure that it fit up to the fender perfectly. After I had the driver's side headlight in, I moved on to the passenger side and started installing that. So this is super awesome that these headlights work. Now, I did notice right here, this is sitting a little low, but this bracket did get broken somewhere. So I'm gonna have to order that bracket, not a big deal. I'm also, because this is got a little bit of damage, I am gonna might have to straighten that out a little bit. But now we can get to the exciting part and start installing the fender on the car and making this thing look like a car again, instead of a, you know, big pile of mess. I re-removed the passenger side headlight. It made it easier to fit up this fender to make sure that we got gapping. And then I ended up reinstalling the headlight. This is what happened. It is looking really good. This gap right here could come out a little bit, but we'll work on that. And then I noticed right here, he kind of got a little bit of a funny gap. I think that when we put the bumper on it, it will help adjust that a little bit and over here but that's probably due to this being broke which i have to order and then it should be good because i will stabilize it and i'll be able to angle the headlight a little bit but for now let's put the bumper on because this thing is starting to look absolutely sick so let's install everything on the bumper that needs to be installed and then we can put the bumper on with the bumper on the stand, I started using this Dremel tool so I could cut out this middle section so that the grill would fill it up and I almost had a little bit of a oopsie, but thank God I didn't. With this middle section removed, now it's time to install the grill. With the grill installed, of course, you gotta make sure that it's sitting flush. Now that we have the grill in and the bumper, somehow I managed to not scratch this when I almost fell over. But we're gonna hook up some new grills and headlights. I bought those from Rock Auto for super cheap. They were like, I think it was like 30 bucks for a set of headlights and like 40 for the grill parts. But now we can put them in here. I had to drill a little pilot holes so I could screw in the fog lights because this aftermarket bumper didn't have pilot holes. Then I put in the grills and then moved on to the other side and repeated and did the exact same thing. Now it is time for my favorite part. We're gonna install the bumper because installing the bumper covers, I feel like completely changes the car, makes it look awesome. So let's install the bumper cover on the car. I had to re-remove the headlights for like the third time so that I could fit in the crash bar. After the crash bar was installed, then I reinstalled the headlights and then moved on to fitting up the bumper. We do got a little bit of a gap. Same with it here. Looks like that the bumper might have to go up, but when I put the supports on underneath, I think it'll be good. It's looking good. Not bad from looking like this. Hey guys, now that we got the hood and bumper on, we can start working on putting the under trays on the underside of this car, which uh, you might not think that these are important, but these actually help support the bumper and keep it from cracking. So we need to put these on so we don't break the new bumper that we just painted. I had to slid the front tray into place and then moved on to installing the rear tray and then started securing some of the bolts. After the trays were installed, then I was able to install the wheel liners on the driver's side and then install it on the passenger side. You see, we got the underside of the car and the body of it looking good, 
but there still is one slight problem on the inside of the car that is absolutely driving me nuts. And that is this pesky airbag light won't go out. And I think the only way to get the airbag light out is by replacing this airbag module because when I scan it, I'm getting a fault code that says no communication. The airbag module is underneath here. So we're gonna have to take all this out to get to the airbag module. To get the airbag module, I had to start by removing the AC control unit. After the AC control unit is out of the way, you could pry up this little like boot thing. And then from there, you pry up and then the whole center unit comes out. Oh yeah, I also had to remove the ashtray and cigarette lighter out of the way. Unit out of the way, you're able to get to these four eight millimeter bolts that hold the front of the center console into place. You can move on to the rear and there's these vents that you have to pop up, pry off to four 14 millimeter bolts. Oh yeah, you do have to remove this little vent plastic thing out of the way in order to get to the bolts. After the four 13 millimeter bolts are out of the way, you can lift up the center console and it comes right out. This exposes the airbag control module, which the carpet is perforated so you can tear it out of the way. And then there is three 10 millimeter bolts that secure airbag module down, which is pretty important and you'll see why. After I removed the old module, I installed the new module and let's just say this happened. Now that we got the airbag module installed, let's turn on the car and see if this pesky airbag light goes away. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. Okay, so I just started it up. Airbag, oh, it went off for a second. It went off for a second. I'm gonna plug in the scanner and see if I might be able to reset it now. I got my scanner tool out and started to run a diagnosis. With the scanner tool, it would not let me reset the airbag control module. And if you remember from earlier, I said that there was those three 10 millimeter bolts that were important and this is why. You see, I ended up learning, we did get the airbag light off, but I ended up switching between the two modules. And if you take this off, it grounds itself and look at airbag lights on. And then we ground this out again on the other one. And airbag light goes off. So if you're ever trying to program a module and it's not working, just check to see if there might be a ground. So let's reinstall all this stuff back into the car. That's really annoying. But let's, let's reinstall the center console. This is fixed, and then we're gonna move on. You see, the old airbag module wasn't actually bad. There's a capacitor in it. I was reading on forms that if you unplug the airbag control module, it will actually reset itself. With the airbag control module installed, now it's time to, I mean, reinstall the center console and just do everything in reverse. Now that we got the inside of the Audi looking so clean and nice, except for the floorboards, we gotta clean them together. Now we have to make the outside look just as good as the inside. So and get all the sticky stuff off the window. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go and clean this thing and make it look really good and start getting it ready to sell it.
got the car all done. It is looking absolutely sick. Now there is still a few things that need to be fixed, like this windshield needs to be fixed and the radio, but we'll get to that in the next episode. If you made it this far in the video, you're awesome. If you wanna know how much it costs to rebuild that, that'll be in the next one when we're finishing everything up and then we're gonna sell it. And I got the motor for the TT. If you like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see me put the motor in here. And if you wanna know how much that the Audi costs to build, thanks for watching. This video is over and peace.